Hey there, comics fans. Vince Bruzio here from Previews World. I'm sitting next to a guy right here. This is the new Jekyll and Hyde. Okay, he's trying to come off as a knife guy. He's wanted in 50 states. He's fresh off his international crime spree. It's the one and only Jeff Lemire. What's going on, brother man? Not too much, dude. <laughs> Not too much. Just You're having a long day. Yeah, it's San Diego Comic Con. It's always a long day, but it's it's fun too. You know, surrounded by comics and everything we love. So. Yep. So basically, we're here to talk about what's been listed in the new. August issue of the previous catalog, which is Sherlock Frankenstein, number one. David Rubin, right, is doing the artwork. And um, this is springboarding off Black Hammer. And so, like, what, it's, a, it's a miniseries, correct? Mm -hmm. And it's going into a different direction than what we normally would see in Black Hammer? Yeah, well, Black Hammer itself is a pretty contained story about those specific characters who are lost on the farm. And uh, But in doing that story, I started to realize that the world of Black Hammer, the world they came from, the superhero universe they came from, is so big and it really could span the entire history of what we know to be superhero comics, Golden Age, Silver Age, and in that there must have been dozens and dozens of other characters and other stories to tell. So I really wanted to have a, a place where I could kind of go off and set stories that are still connected to the main Black Hammer story, but also stand alone and tell compelling, complete stories on their own with different characters. So uh, Sherlock will be the first of those where we kind of examine things from the villain's point of view, but we'll also, th in doing that, kind of uh, show this tapestry, this, this history, this universe from the 1920s through the present and introduce all kinds of new superheroes, supervillains, and potential new stories. Now the main character's name is Lucy, right? And she's more or less an investigative reporter. And I kind of looked at, I, I read the description, there's like a Silence of the Lambs type thing going on. Like, I'm just waiting for somebody, hello Clarice, you know. Is that, <laughs> where, where exactly is, is Lucy going to be finding herself? Yeah, so Lucy, Lucy Weber is the daughter of Black Hammer, the, the missing, one of the missing heroes. And she's on a quest to find her dad and what happened to the other heroes. So that's where we start our story. Uh, and she starts to realize, well, one place I should be exa examining more is all the supervillains. Maybe they had something to do with it. So she goes to what is sort of the equivalent in the Black Hammer universe of uh, like Arkham Asylum or, you know, the supervillain penitentiary. Yeah. And that's our entry point. And it kind of spins out into a bigger mystery from there. And we, and we meet different villains and, and yeah. Yeah, the Arkham Asylum thing, I was starting to, I said, this sounds like Kurt Music's Marvel dipped in cyanide, put in a microwave, hit bake, and then all of a sudden out pops Sherlock Frankenstein. I could see some, you know, some, some influences there of, of previous works. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole Black Hammer, one of the things I love about it is it really is my love letter to all the superhero comics I love since I was a kid till now. So you, you'll see allusions to all kinds of stuff from Arkham Asylum through Astro City that you mentioned. You know, it's a big influence on doing these spinoffs. So, yeah. Let me ask you one last, one, one last thing or two. As far as the voices go for the characters, I mean, these are all new, you know, people that you're creating here. You know, what time do you find yourself spending most on when it comes to trying to hear those voices in your head? and channeling that through certain individuals. Does favoritism ever come into the play? Like, I really hate this guy, so it's harder for me to write that person? Or, I mean, do you have that kind of inner conflict sometimes when you're trying to get the voices right? No, it, from, it never really feels like that to me. Mostly, honestly, it almost feels like I'm watching it happen in my head, and I'm just, like, dictating what's going on. So it's, it's not so much me, like, making choices and decisions like that as me just sort of, yeah, being a stenographer and, and kind of recording what I'm seeing. So, so what's the most rewarding aspect of making this series? I mean, what's what's this getting out of you? Um, for me, it's really fun to have a place where I, I mean, I love, obviously love superhero comics and uh, I've done a lot of writing for Marvel and DC and will probably continue to do so, but it's really great to have a spot where I can do a superhero comic my own way and put a twist on it uh, and not have to answer to a bigger universe and all kinds of editors and where I can just really make these stories my own and really personal and, and um, yeah, so this Black Hammer and the Black Hammer universe has become that playground for me. Just leaving your own footprint. Yeah, man, just building my own world. So. All right. Well, good luck to you, brother. Thank I you. wish you all the best, man. I mean, folks, it's going to be in stores in October because it's in the August previews. Sherlock Frankenstein's a miniseries from Dark Horse Comics. Make sure you pick it up. Jeff Lemire right here saying you're not going to be disappointed. Remember, keep the faith and keep reading comics.